<laughs> I understand. Well, hey, man, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out to the show today. I appreciate it. Sure, always ready for a uh, podcast. Right on. So I, I want to begin our conversation with living through the last three and a half years of a pandemic. How did you get through it and how did it change you? Uh, that's a great question. The pandemic really opened my eyes to a lot of things. You know, we saw a shift in humanity, if you will. So I kind of navigated on the outskirts of everything, looking inward. I saw a few confrontational things happening during that period. And I really felt that that just fed me more purpose in what I had to offer into the world. So, yeah, navigating COVID was an enlightening experience. And I think it really shifted the mindset of a lot of people in the world. So let's get to the essence of you. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of grade school kids, third graders. It's career day. And one of the kids looks up and asks you, what do you do for a living? How would you answer that child? I would say that I make it possible for people to communicate their deepest feelings with the world. And communication is one of the key things in our life. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, as a host, Take me back to the beginnings of your life. Where were you born and raised? And how did these seeds get into you to want to communicate and to want to cultivate this dialogue? Uh, I was born in Tillamook, Oregon, and rapidly moved to Washington State. There I was raised most of my childhood. And it really made me see life as... Uh, burden if you will it wasn't until later in life that i discovered there's meaning and hope so that's really what got me going is learning about life itself and why are we here what does it all mean and the burdens that come along with it so that's really what it's all about in life so Who's What did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? I wanted to be an entertainer. I, I wanted to be like Elvis Presley. Right on. So that naturally leads to my next question. Who's been a hero for you in your life? A key hero in my life would be my wife because she really turned my life around and she educated me to what being a man is truly about and how to live with a structured life with meaning and value associated with it. So let me ask you this, who would be a dream interview for you to have? Who would you, if you could pick anybody on the planet to interview, who would it be? I'd like to speak with Jordan Peterson. Uh, I think he has a lot to offer by how he looks at life and he's non-judgmental towards others he's really interested in engagement and that's really i think we need more of so i would probably like to dive in with jordan peterson and see how he actually ticks so what's been the best advice you've ever gotten that's been the most beneficial for you in your life I would say that came from my cousin, and that's the 7P principle. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Very nice. So, you know, the one thing after coming out of this pandemic is that I know that podcasting really exploded during that time period. And I, I see podcasting as kind of a modern version of therapy. We all have the chance to explore each other's stories, to explore who we are. And I think that there's a level of that that, might lead to a more of a human enlightenment now that we've kind of come out of this pandemic. Do you see us entering a level of, of collective enlightenment? Yeah, I really think that's part of what COVID actually brought to the planet is a shift in human thought and interaction is really key. 
uh, we can see ourselves living in a divided world. And we really had that opportunity to be with ourselves for a while. Yeah. And that's tough. So learning to look inward and finding the hope, the direction that you truly need to live a sustainable and happy life. There's so much depression in our world. And because of the COVID incident, it really forced people to look inward and develop new ways of interaction and how to live in society. So every day you wake up, what's the motivation? What's the fuel for you? What makes you be who you are and to be curious and to seek out the conversations and stories? I would say that came when I wanted to actually have assisted suicide in my life. I was rock bottom. I, I was basement rock bottom. And discovering that I'm not alone, that was so huge. Through conversations and opening up and saying, no more of this. I, I want to get to the bottom of it and discover how to live joyfully. That's really the essence of it. So of all of the things that you've done in your life, what are you the proudest of? My marriage. Yeah. So I, I, I have, excuse me. Yeah, oh, no, I, no. I have 40 years. I have 40 years with my wife and where I come from, that's a miracle. So I am so blessed and I am so amazed that we have navigated the troubled waters and ended up so happy together. It's a wonderful thing. What's been the key? You know, it's all there's something to be said about longevity, especially in a marriage. What's been the key? What's what's made it work? I think that would be our relationship with Christ. We are really staunch believers. We don't push our belief on others, but we connect and we find that connection through a meaningful hope. And that really gives longevity to a relationship. If you see a higher power, a structure bigger than yourself, I think that's important. So let's say we get off the we get off our call here and a time machine rolls up to your house. You can go back in time and see any event in human history with your own eyes. Where are you going to go? What do you want to see? I want to see the moment Jesus was pinned to the cross and the love through his suffering where he gave inspiration and hope to everyone where he said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. So what's been one of the best letters, fan responses, feedback that you've gotten as a podcast host? Uh, there's been a lot, but the one that really stands out is when a young man reached out to me and said, you've really helped me change how I think about the world. And it makes me a better person today. It made everything worth my whole life worth everything right there. So everyone out there, Ed, has a perception of you, family, friends, your listeners, everyone around you sees you in a different light. But you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think I'm a lifelong curious individual that's interested in every aspect of life through every eye and viewpoint. Because if I limit myself to my own views and my own opinions, I go stagnant. So curiosity, I really find myself and looking inward, I would say I'm a very curious individual and seek hope for education for people. What, what's your hope as we kind of move forward? You know, we're kind of getting into, out of this year, into the next. Things have been kind of uncertain in, in a lot of ways. We're heading into an election year. What's your hope? What are you holding on to? I hope for humanity. 
going forward. I really hope that we can all come together. We always have misunderstandings, but it's humanity that brings us back. And I really hope that we can find deeper conversations that have meaning and structure. That, that really is my hope for the future. And I think, as I had mentioned before, and I could tell by your response, that podcast thing and, and having these conversations, the civil discourse of exploring who we all are, I think we're a lot more alike than we're not. I've discovered that that's the deepest secret in humanity. We're all alike. It's just we're unique and we have our differences. Once we truly find that it's okay to be different and I don't have to be exactly like you or Sarah or Jim. My uniqueness is my inspiration and hope to others. Absolutely. Ed, this has been great. If anyone wants to listen to your show, learn more about you, reach out to you, where's the best place to do that? Deadamerica.website. And it's been a fantastic conversation, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Have a great holiday season. You also. Take care.